Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. When you're learning how to play acoustic guitar, it becomes very, very important for you to be able to master the usage of your guitar pick. Now, when we use the guitar pick, we call this flat picking, okay? We're using the guitar pick to pick the strings. What we're going to focus on right now is single note picking, okay? So instead of strumming chords, uh, although we may do that here and there, what we're going to really focus on is trying to look at picking with the guitar pick. Now. There's really only two things that you can do with a guitar pick. You can pick downward, and you can pick upward. Okay? The trick for you is to figure out the most comfortable way of being able to utilize these two elements. Sometimes we use a constant down-up picking, which is called alternate picking. And what I use a lot is what I refer to as the up scoop, which is a lot of times when I'm doing something that's more ar arpeggiated, um, I might pick downward and then pop up at the end, okay? So what I want to show you right now is just, let's just talk about alternate picking versus down picking, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand just simple down picking. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a pattern um, and we're going to start playing through it. So let's just take the D chord, for instance, okay? Now again, it doesn't matter what chord or what scale you're using, we're just going to talk about the concept of picking through an element. So we're just going down, okay? Now what I want you to notice is I'm not doing this, okay? I'm not forcing the pick through and getting kind of this jagged and in, in irregular rhythm by doing that. What I am doing is I'm picking the pick up each time and then resetting. Now, again, there's a million things you can learn how to do, but this is what we're going to talk about right now is control of the down pick. Now, the first thing to understand is as I'm doing this, um, as I move this, most of my action is coming from the wrist as I pick. Okay? Sometimes it's easier to use the elbow when you're picking, but I, for me, when I'm doing this, it's, it's easier for me to be more accurate at using the wrist here. Where I use the elbow more when I'm strumming. That sort of thing, okay? So, what I want you to do is think about staying really relaxed and really loose. The second thing I want you to think about is whether or not you want to hover or whether or not you want to stabilize, okay? Now, hovering means what you're going to do is you're basically going to brace right here where your elbow is. You're going to brace on the guitar, and you're going to hover. Your fingers are not going to touch the guitar. And you're going to play kind of out in the air like that. Stabilizing is you're going to take your pinky or your third finger or your middle finger or maybe a combination of the two or three, right? And you're just going to sort of use that as um, a stabilizer as you move through the guitar. You're kind of touching that, that guitar there. I'm touching the pick guard here. And I'm just kind of moving along using this as a guide. Now what I tend to use is my third and my pinky. Sometimes it's just one or the other, but I don't really use the middle finger for that as much uh, because it feels like I'm stretching out too much if I put all three fingers there. It's okay if you don't grab the guitar as you're playing, if you don't stabilize. It's perfectly fine. Um, I just want you to be aware of that, okay? Because as you start doing these things, we're going to learn 
um, some basic fundamental movements. But in the bigger picture, what you want to be able to do is just figure out what is most comfortable for you organically as you're picking. Okay, so that's the first place for us to start. So we're just doing a motion of downs. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding in what I call the op scoop. Okay, and what that means is, and I, I can't say that I do this all the time, but I would be willing to bet I do it 95% of the time. When I get to the end of whatever pattern I'm doing, if I'm doing down picking like this, Okay, I do an up scoop or an up stroke at the very end to send my hand in my guitar pick back up so I can begin all over again. So instead of going down, 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 down and winding up down here and then I got to start all over, what I do is I play down, 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 up, which forces my hand in my pick back up. Which is way more comfortable for me. So I want you to try that, okay? Try doing, on this just plain old D chord, D major here, we're doing down, 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 up. Okay, so the first pattern that we did, whether or not you're hovering, or whether or not you're stabilizing, okay, you're playing downs. Okay, or you're playing downs with an up scoop at the end, or an up stroke at the end, whatever you want to call it. I was just thinking of it as scooping because I'm really just kind of grabbing that pick and getting back to the top. Okay, now the third thing that you could do with this, which is going to be a little bit less efficient for this particular situation, although it can be very useful when playing scales, is true alternate picking, which is down, up, down, up. Okay, which again becomes very, very useful for other things. In this particular um, exercise, I wouldn't necessarily do that, but what I want you to do is I want you to practice all three of these things to get kind of comfortable with it. So you're going down, up, down, up. Now, as you do that, you need to kind of disconnect your thoughts a little bit from it because it feels really unusual, oftentimes. Okay, so again, it's a natural flow. Now, out of these three options that we've got for just simply picking through this D chord or whatever chord we're going to be using, what I need you to start thinking about is, A, what's most comfortable for you? Okay, and B, what seems like with the proper practice, it's going to be most practical for you. Okay, because sometimes like if, if you've just started kind of learning how to do this sort of thing, you're probably going to think that the downs are the most comfortable because there's no, there's no variety, there's no fluctuation of the pattern. So it seems easier, which it, it is. The problem with it is, is that it's limiting because it's um it's not very efficient in the bigger picture so it's okay if that seems like it's the easiest pattern but the next step then is to think about what is the most useful pattern that you think would be um applicable to to your guitar playing does that make sense i want you to practice all three of them because uh, as you keep going as a guitar player you're going to need all three of these techniques for various things okay but I just want you to be aware of that as you start learning how to do this. The other thing is to th start thinking about hovering versus 
stabilizing, okay? Which one seems most comfortable to you? And again, that's probably going to be because of what you have done in the past, but then you also need to think about which one is more um, useful to you for your future, right? And if it's the same thing, that's perfectly fine, but I want you to be aware of that, okay? Because the whole thing with, with single note picking is that you want to be accurate. <laughs> Okay. Regardless of which pattern that you're doing, you want to be able to have a, a very good uh, element of accuracy as you're doing. It doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Don't worry about that. It's just which one tends to flow better as you start work, working with it. So if I was to take these ideas... You're going to start noticing as I'm playing that I'm really using a combination of all of them, but mostly the bottom two, which is the um, the up scoop or the upstroke at the end, and then the alternate picking pattern depending on what I'm doing. Okay, and the reason the alternate picking starts happening is because every time I want to go back up, it's the it's the same concept as the the up scoop or the upstroke. Um, is that I want to get my pick back up so I can do something again in the in the bass strings. So that's why I'm heading back up. Right there, I'm going. So I'm playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the reason is because I'm constantly going back up, so I want that upstroke to get me there. See? So it's really important to think about that as you start learning um, single note picking or flat picking, in this case, um, deciding which one is most comfortable for you. Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. In order to learn how to effectively finger pick, the first thing you need to understand is that there's really three different patterns that dominate the fretboard when you're doing finger picking, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start off with a D chord. It's a nice chord, easy chord to use for this. And what we're going to do, what you need to do is you need to make a, a choice in your finger picking what fingers you're going to be using. Often when you're playing folk style of finger picking, not classical style, but folk style. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.